Hi. The um, project I'm going to talk about right now starts like this. There is only one rule. It's a silent experience, but if anything bothers you, just let me know. You can stop the experience whenever you want to. And to begin, I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. No, 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 don't close your eyes now. Once those instructions are spelled out, a couple composed of a spectator, let's call it a spectator, whose eyes are closed and a guide whose eyes are open start to walk in a city, any city. And during their walk, the guide will choose and extract different focal points, call it images, along their way and show them to the spectator who will be asked to open the eyes in the moment of a flash. So really open, close. He will get to see an average of 10 images in the duration of one hour. This walk has been going on for six years now. More than 1,000 people have experienced it, mostly in European cities, but also in South and North American cities. Uh, in various contexts of visibility, such as exhibitions, festivals, art schools, research projects. And for more than four years, I've been transmitting the device, I'll call it a device, to other performing artists. So now we are a group of 10 guides able to activate the device. And what I'm going to do now, or at least try to do in the, the time I have, is focus on the effects that this very minimal device has had on the perception of what is in question here. So to say public space, and more specifically urban public space. And first of all, maybe you need to know a little bit more about the parameters which this walk deals with. As soon as the spectator closes the eyes and the mouth, there is obviously a very clear intensification of the sensor's activity and a reorganization of the perceptive patterns. And today, among this complex reorganization, I'm going to focus on the touch. Since in this walk, the hands of the guides and of the spectator become the main gate through which an exchange can happen between those two persons. What the hands are indicating, apart from giving directions, are the physical presences, not only of the guide to reassure, but of the spectator himself. The hands are asking the bodies to be the place for the experience to happen. They are in somehow calling upon the body for a physical, co-constructed experience of the city to happen. And coming from dance, I am very interested in the modalities of transfer of sensorial information and the forms of relations which emerge from it. How do we negotiate relations? on the base of sensorial parameters? How do we negotiate space on that base? And precisely this device relies on a very specific use of touch, some kind of an airy touch. It never grabs the body. It just lies on the surface like air does, considering skin as a communication tool, an interface between the inside activity of the body and the outdoor environment. If you start considering this notion of interface seriously, skin is no longer an impermeable surface, defining the outline of the little self. It becomes a porous envelope, a place of exchange, not only between the two bodies involved, but also between all the elements composing the situation in which the duet evolves. So maybe one of the questions that this walk asks would be, what do you see? of a city when you perceive it from a 360 degree porous envelope? What are the different beings who start to play in that situation? Could the city become a more porous space then? Whatever that means. And what I've noticed is that there is a strange relation between skin and another basic parameter which this walk relies on, which is basically there is nowhere to go not only for the spectator who doesn't see where he's going anyway, but for the guide who never pre-establishes his path. And what I discovered little by little is that this absence of purpose, of function for motion, had an enormous impact on our physical organization in very 
basic terms, I would say that muscular activity answers to intention. You make a choice and your body mobilizes muscular energy to answer to that choice. But if you move away from that pattern, you shift to much more receptive, almost passive physical systems, such as bones, skin, even fluids, organs. And through the years of practice of those physical changes, I witnessed a shift from a paradigm of intention to attention and started to wonder what becomes of public space if you lose the sense of functional orientation. What does this attention model make of space? I'm going to enter now in this, the compositional aspect of the guide's activity. F his starting point as a guide is the encounter with an environment which is the spectator's body. It is from that encounter that he will start to compose a path and a sequence of images. The, since this encounter is never the same, the path and the sequence will also constantly variate. So the guide's path of attention, what he sees, what he perceives, where he walks, is tuned to the spectator's, let's say, atmosphere, the things that we, the rhythm, the reaction, the temperatures, anything that comes out from this physical uh, relation becomes the tools for the guides to compose. So it is through this changing relation that the guide starts to play the dynamics of space provided by a city, what is up, down, narrow, wide, silent, noisy, still moving. All those heterogeneity in the city becomes the, uh, the ingredients for the guide to compose. So I would say that it's through perceptive dynamics that the guide composed, so the attention of the spectator is forced to constantly retune itself to new parameters. This walk is close to a set of moving geometries into a continuous space, which is the city. This nowhere to go, shape-shifting experience alterates considerably the state of consciousness, not only of the spectator, but of the guide also. And I realized after a year or two of practice that I had the impression of walking with someone asleep, as if it was producing something close to a dream activity, a passive recomposition of a world out of fragments of reality, a world which doesn't need to be coherent or logic, a world which recomposes itself out from the will, from a series of informations that we really perceive and a series of information that the mind and the body creates. Fragments of narratives, of other spaces, of memories, of thoughts. And those, this package projects reality into an unseen form, a moving form. And the, I think the experience triggers a form of reality which unblocks the force of imagination. So what is there? So to say, the city, a body, a relation, might also be something else. A space penetrated by the, the possibility of a transformation. The city can no longer be a permanent or stable frame. It's no longer taken for granted. It becomes a space to be constructed as the relation. A space to be constructed. So maybe the question which is implied by this walk for me now is what is the form of the reality into which we, into which we slip when that reality is no longer spatially or socially oriented? And I think that maybe public space or our use of public space needs a little dose of disorientation practices on a very regular basis, uh, on an exercise basis, to keep the possibility of transformation active. And actually, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so, um, tell me a little bit more about this, um, this, this transformation through a disassembled or mm. rearranged public space. Mm. Because I think we talked earlier about this being an embodied politics, not a didactic politics, and mm. I wondered if this is the site for you. Yeah, there's a form of re-editing yeah. of the reality of the city. So I think it's, it's very simple. Huh? The, the time of the ellipse, 
when you don't see, yep. starts to be a time for imagination to produce um, other stuff. I have mm. no idea what those stuff are, but suddenly they relate to the city and they start transforming it as an al alchemic, alchemic, al alchemi well, alchemical, al alchemical yeah. experience of reality, but also of your body. I think the sensorial aspect is really important because it, it shifts the way we associate things together. Okay, so some kind of haptic yeah. revolution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.